Hello YouTube and welcome. If you're new to the channel, uh, there's loads of stuff about cars and motorcycles and various bits. If you've been to the channel before, welcome back. A slightly different scenario this time, as you can see. Anyway, I'm inside my camper van. I'm getting it ready for a little trip I've got planned. And we're going to go to Dumfries and Galloway which is part of Southwest Scotland. I'll be away for a few days and I intend stopping at free camper stops and I'll do separate videos of them so that if you do fancy coming up this way and you've got a camper van, you've got an idea of where you can stop. There are loads of campsites. I won't cover any campsites because there are dozens of them up there. Uh, they're all fairly small and pre-booking might be advised given the situation at the minute with staycations but uh, I'll leave campsites alone so I will show you on the map where we're going to be going today and then there will be subsequent videos and I'll give you the little route I intend following each day as we go so for today this is the main route the main run let's have a look now I live in Derbyshire so I will be going up the M6, round Carlisle to Gretna, where I'll then turn off to Annan. And from Annan, I'll drop onto some minor roads, little yellow roads, run along the, the Firth, and then cut up to Glen Capel. And that's where I'll be spending the first night. So, let's go and have a look. Right, we're uh, heading north on the M6 now. We're above, uh, beyond Blackpool. It's remarkably quiet. I didn't expect it to be really busy, to be honest, but it is remarkably quiet. It was very heavy rain leaving Derbyshire, but the sky in front, hopefully you'll be able to see, is uh, clearer. So I'm hoping that's the end of the rain. Anyway, there's no point letting you watch loads of motorway action because it's really, really dull. So I think I've probably got another hour and a half and I'll bring you back when we hit Scotland. Here we are, it's official Welcome to Scotland sign, we're just coming up now, so we're here and this should be our turn off. We have arrived and hopefully we will be able to get parked up because this is where I intend spending the night. Unfortunately you can't see very much in the minute because it's pitch black. Hopefully in the morning it will be bright and clear and you can see just how lovely it is. But for the time being, this is it. And there are some camper vans here already. Good morning. And welcome to the first full day of our little trip. We're at the Glen Capel Park Up. There'll be a separate video about that showing you the layout of the place in case anyone wants to visit. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Very peaceful night, woken to the sound of birds pattering on the roof. Lovely, just really, really lovely. Well, there's the view out the uh, back door first thing this morning. Just a patch of blue sky. As my grandmother used to say, if there's enough blue to patch a Helaman's trousers, or trousers in fact, then uh, it'd be a good day. So this is Glen Capel. That's the River Nith that you see panning off up there. That heads up to Dumfries. It is a beautiful spot. You've got a small village just on the right. An absolutely ideal place to spend the night.
Now it's hard to imagine now looking at this small place at Glen Capel. The boats used to sail from here to America, the West Indies. Tobacco used to come in down the Nith along with the Spanish wine, various uh, fancy goods from around the continent. So this was a, a bustling and busy place and in addition to the ships bringing all that produce there was a healthy smuggling business going on as well because tobacco was heavily taxed. It's also hard to work out looking at the place but they used to build ships here as well. So anyone driving past now would have no concept of uh, the history as it's just a quiet little village. So I'm going to uh, move on now and follow the Solway Firth Road. Before we set off then today the map's back out and I'll just show you where we're going to go. We're going to go from Glen Capel up into the Vries and then back down the other side of uh, the Nith Estuary, New Abbey, down round here past Sandy Hills, Rockcliffe and then up round Dalbeatty all the way down here to Kakubri and then from there we have to uh, change map pages because we're going to go along here on the A75 for a short section. So there we are at Kakubri, back onto the A75 we're going to go along there almost into Newton Stewart and then we're going to come down this road here to Wigton and right down to the Isle of Whithorn which should be down here there we go Isle of Whithorn there are three camper stops there and at Wigton so we should be looking at both of those so I'm going to pack up put the batteries on charge for the camera because uh, they seem to go down very quickly on these little action cameras and uh, just see what we can find. So let's go and have a look. Right this is the uh, historic village of New Abbey where unsurprisingly there is a very old abbey which I'm just going to park up and show you. It's a, a very old corn mill which outside Covid times was open for visits and no doubt will be again in a couple of weeks. This is a charming little village, very historic. And we're just going to pull into the car park and I'll show you the abbey, which looks like it's getting some major renovation works done. Right, this is Sweetheart Abbey. It was uh, founded by Lady Davor Giller in the late 1200s and her husband was a John Balliol who was the founder of Balliol College at Oxford. So some real medieval history tied up in this place. Now it's called Sweetheart Abbey because he died and she was so heartbroken she had his heart embalmed and put into a casket and then she built the abbey a couple of years later and then when she herself died she insisted that she be laid to rest clutching the casket with her late husband's heart in and the monks who ran the place were so impressed by this devotion that they called it the Sweetheart Abbey. So there you go, a piece of medieval romance in southwest Scotland. Now this is a, an imposing building really for an area of such low population but this part of uh, Scotland in Dumfries and Galloway was uh, the heartlands at that time of Scottish independence. This was a power base for uh, the Scottish kings and people like Robert the Bruce and so on as a, they had a lot of support around here. So there you go there was money, power, influence and ultimately an expression of love. Right, 
Right, back onto the uh, narrow stone wall lined back roads of Dumfries area. The sky is clear, there's a bit of a black cloud off to the right but hopefully we won't see any of that today. And the next stop will be the seaside. Now the most popular area around here is a, a place called Sandy Hills which as you could probably guess from the name has a large sandy beach but my happiest memories are from a smaller place a little bit further on which is where we're heading for so I'll bring you back right, the uh, wildflowers are out on the uh, side of the road and to our left is the Solway Firth now most of this section is you're separated from the sea by privately owned farms. However, when I was small, the farmers used to let you drive on their tracks down to the beach. I don't know if that still happens, but I have fond memories sitting in the back of a Ford Anglia as we bumped down the farmers' tracks to get down to the seaside. So you never know. Maybe that survives in the summer. The farmers might open up the fields and let you get down. In fact, we'll nip down to the viewpoint and just have a look at the sea. So this is Drumburn viewpoint. Fabulous, fabulous view. Let me just see if this will spin. Hopefully you'll get all of that. Now as you can see the sea is a long way out, which is uh, not uncommon round here. It often is in this part and that's why it's so bad for quicksand. But as you can see the fields pretty much run down to the sea. There are normally sheep on them. I'm not sure why there's no sheep today. They're normally full of sheep. But there you go. Beautiful. And you won't be able to see it with this camera, but in the far distance in the haze you can see England, you can see Cumbria. On to Rockcliffe. I must say though the relentless traffic is starting to get on my nerves. Joke, I've barely seen a car. It's uh, considering the beauty of this area it really is one of the quieter corners of Scotland and undeservedly so. Who knows, maybe somebody watching this video might be uh, tempted to come and have a look. And that was my purpose, because I love this area. So anyway, I just had to say that as we drove along. So before we get to uh, Rockcliffe, I'd forgotten about this place and I thought I'd just show you it. So why is there an American flag flying here next to the salt air in southwest Scotland. How strange. And now we'll tell you why. Because this little cottage is the birthplace of John Paul Jones. And John Paul Jones lived in the mid to late 18th century and he left this little cottage and went to America where he eventually became a Commodore of the American Navy and a hero of the American Revolution because he uh, I believe I don't know how many but I believe he was very active in the fight against the British so the British regarded him not unreasonably as a pirate essentially but to the Americans of course he was a hero and the French thought he was pretty good too because they were never that keen on the British at the time either so this is his cottage tucked away in a small village well on the outskirts of a small village it's actually quite remote in southwest Scotland and just over there 
is the sea. So he lived a stone's throw from the sea. So it was obviously in his blood. So there you go, an American hero from southwest Scotland. Also here, there's a, a camping and caravanning club, I think. I think it's them. A certified location with five places, £15 a night. We're passing Sandy Hills. Hopefully there's a sleep round, you'll see a bit more of the beach, which is not massive, but it's lovely. And then there's a campsite right on the beach, which is always popular. It looks quite busy now because it's such a charming little spot. And also there's a bit of a microclimate along this part of Solway Fir. It, stay, it seems to stay a lot milder than anywhere around it. It uh, always seems to be more pleasant. Helpfully marked dead end, which is uh, unsurprising given we're driving down to the sea. Let's pull over and let this person get through. Beautiful morning. It's uh, half past ten. Not boiling hot because it is still early May, but nice enough. I made this run down this road to Rockcliffe many, many times. 